Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie, and in this video we're gonna be continuing covering top 100 PHP functions that you see highlighted here. Starting with array push, which pushes one or more elements onto the end of the array. It returns an integer, which is gonna be the length of the array, and takes in the array as a first parameter and values as a second parameter. So let me demonstrate how this works. Let me create a new array, I'm gonna call it medicine. And it's gonna have some real nature's medicine here. So now I'm just gonna print it out using the pre-r function. And so this is our array so far. Now suppose we wanted to add more elements to the end of the array, so here's where array push comes in. And first we specify the array that we're gonna be adding elements to, and then we can just list multiple values that we can add to the end of the array. And then I'm gonna print the array again to see the result. And there we go. Now we have three more medicines added to the end of the array. And that's it for array push. Let's move on to the next one, which is floor. Okay, so floor is a very simple function that rounds down the decimal number. So if we have something like this, it's going to round down the number to 12. So now we have 12. And just to give you guys a couple more examples, floor, if it's a negative number, it's going to go down. So in this case, it's going to be negative four. So it just rounds down the number. And in case of a 0 0.5, it's going to be zero. So that really all it does. Let's move on to the next one, which is str to time. So str to time, parses about any English textual daytime description into a Unix timestamp. Okay, so let's see how this works. So, suppose we wanted to convert str to time, suppose we wanted to convert the word now to Unix format time. So here's where str to time can come in and uh, we now have this integer which is a Unix timestamp and Unix timestamp is the number of seconds since January 1st 1970 and uh, this doesn't really matter but um, what's useful to understand it is this integer here so what's useful to keep in mind here is that this integer here is uh, how we track the actual time so to make this a little bit more easier to understand, let's combine str to time with uh, date function. So date is used to format time. So let me just this will make more sense now. So str to time now, and that's how we can get the actual time or the actual date by combining it with a date function. So we can't just specify the date in a string format um, inside of the date function. It requires the Unix timestamped integer that we got earlier. And uh, the way to get it is to use str to time function. And then we can use the keyword that we humans understand. And that's how we can get the actual date. So, so I got a couple of more examples here. We can do next week, we can even type plus one week, two days, four hours and two seconds. And uh, we're gonna get the future dates by doing that. So as you can see, this is a week from now and this is a week and three days from now. So that's str to time let's move on to the next one, which is HTML special chars. So HTML special chars converts special characters to HTML entities. So let's create some HTML here first, and then I'll show you guys what the function does.
just gonna type in the URL of the image I have at Clever Techie website. And so now I'm just gonna print out this HTML. And as you can see, it's showing the actual image because that's what HTML code is supposed to do. However, if we wanted to display the actual text, which is shown here, that's where HTML special cars can come in. So, HTML special chars, refresh the page, and now we have the actual text instead of HTML being parsed by the browser. Because we let PHP know to convert HTML characters to special chars, so um, that's why it's displaying the actual text. And if we go to view page source, you can see that these characters have been in fact converted to special chars and that's how uh, the browser knows to display those characters as text instead of uh, interpreting it, instead of interpreting it as HTML. So that's HTML chars. Let's move on to the next one, which is i and I get. Okay, that's HTML special chars. Let's move on to the next one, which is i and I get. So i and I get gets the value of the configuration option, and it gets this option from the PHP .i and I file. So my file is at my PHP i and I file is at cphp. You can locate your own PHP i and I file and open it, and. Um, there's a bunch of options like display errors in this file and that's what they mean by i and i get and then it gets the actual value that this option is set to so let's check it out here so we're gonna say i and i get and then i'm gonna say display errors which is uh, the only parameter that this function takes in And now we should get the display errors value, which is on, so it means true or one. And display errors equals one. So that's how we can use i and i get to get the values of the. And the next function is i and i set, which sets the options, so we can change the values of the i and i options. So, for example, i and i set display errors, and we can set it to zero, and then we can print out the changed value of the display errors. And let's see if that works. So, the default value was one, and then we changed it, and now it's zero. So. That's how those functions work. Now, just one thing to keep in mind before we move on to the next function is that i and i set doesn't work on all the options. And um, if we go to appendix here, it's gonna list all the configuration options here and along with their names. So if we search for display errors, you can see that uh, the you can see that it says PHP i and i all, and that means it's changeable by the script. So we can use i and i set on this particular option. So if it says PHP i and i all, that means we can use i and i set to change the value of that option. And you can go ahead and uh, look through all the options that they have listed here. So that's i and i set. Let's move on to the next one, which is chr. So chr generates a single byte string from a number. So we can look through this table and know which character we're gonna get when using chr and then the decimal number here. So for example, by using CHR65, we're gonna get a capital A. If we use CHR100, we gotta get a lowercase d. And so just look at the decimal here in this column, and then we can combine it with CHR to convert it to um, the actual character listed in this column here. So let's give it a test here. Okay, so CHR, 85, that should give us a capital U. And 
Let's do a couple more. CHR 65. Let's look at a table. 65 should give us a capital A. There it is. And uh, just something to keep in mind that this table is not a complete table of all the decimal characters. So, for example, I'm gonna do CHR 046. And I'm gonna embed it inside of the string. And so you can see that uh, we got an ampersand with CHR046. Also, one cool example that PHP manual provides is um, stringing a bunch of uh, characters together to get an icon. So here's what they have, CHR240. And this is gonna give us an elephant icon. And I'm not exactly sure how this works. Um, there's probably other ways to combine different CHRs to get different icons. If you guys find out how this works, please comment uh, in the video down below. All right, let's move on to the next function, which is extension loaded. And this is a simple function to check uh, what kind of PHP extensions have been loaded. And here's how you check what PHP extensions have been loaded. So you can do php-m, and this should give you a list of all the extensions that have been loaded. So let's create an array with extensions that we want to check check to see if they have been loaded and I'm gonna put in some extensions that don't exist here just to just to see that this function in fact works as it as it should and then I'm gonna loop through all these extensions and use the function extension load it with a ternary operator so if the extension loaded we're gonna say extension is loaded otherwise extension is not loaded and um, let's see what we get curl is loaded, mb string is loaded, html is not loaded because it doesn't exist, and mysql is not loaded because it doesn't exist, xml is loaded, and json is loaded. So that's what that function does, let's move on to the next one, which is isBull. And this is a very simple function that checks if the value is true or false, so if it's a boolean. Now one thing I didn't realize is that 0 and 1 is actually not a boolean, so false so b equals 0 is not a boolean okay and so the way to check this is if is bool a true and we can say it's a boolean. Okay, so I'm using var export to export the actual value of the variable, and uh, we're we're using is bool on a to see if it's in fact a boolean, and then we should get false is a boolean because it is. Now, if we do this with the b. So 
So here, b is not a boolean, it's a zero integer, so we're gonna get b is not a boolean, or zero is not a boolean. And uh, before I actually thought that zero was in fact a boolean number and one was also a boolean, but so using the strict operator with triple equal sign um, means that the boolean is actually a true or a false, it can be zero or one. So that's just something to keep in mind about that. Okay, and the last function is ksort. So ksort sorts an array by key and it takes in an array. And um, I have a pretty long associative array already typed up here. So I'm not gonna type it here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it right in here. And um, those are just some um, existentially important words that I'm working with at this time. And um, you can see that this is an associative array and um, we have letters that are the first letter of the, the keyword. And right now they're not alphabetically sorted. So if we use the print function on the keywords. It's just gonna print out the array and you can see that the associative keys are not sorted in an alphabetical order. So, so here's where we can use ksort to sort those keys alphabetically. And then print the keywords again. Refresh the page. And this time, B, C, E, H, I, J, L, M, N, S, W, you can see that it has sorted all the keys alphabetically. And in the next video, we're finally gonna conclude the top 100 PHP series by covering the last set of functions from 91 to 100. And I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Clever Techie out.